respected Dr. Sakhir Naik. My name is Sujoy Kumar Das. I am a student. I am from Plassey, West Bengal, India. You said in your lecture, many scientific facts we know today have already been mentioned in the Quran. For example, the shape of the earth, moonlight is reflected light, etc. So why did people in the 6th century think that the earth was flat and that moonlight was its own light? But the Sujay Kumar Das seems to be a non-Muslim. I asked that he heard my lecture and I said that, you know, there are many scientific facts mentioned in the Quran which were discovered recently. The Quran was revealed 400 years ago. These scientific facts were discovered yesterday, maybe 500 years back, 300 years back, 200 years back, etc. So, in the 6th century, why did, when the Quran mentioned about that the earth is spherical and the light of the moon is reflected light, so why in the 6th century people believed that the earth was flat and the light of the moon was shown? First, let me tell you one thing, that the Quran was not revealed in the 6th century. Prophet Muhammad was born on 570 AD and the first revelation came when he was 40 years old. That was the 610 AD. So the Quran was revealed in the 7th century. Point number one. Point number two, it doesn't have to be when the Quran was revealed, everyone knows about it. What you have to understand that Quran is not a book of science. S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. There are more than 6,000 ayats, more than 6,000 signs in the glorious Quran, out of which more than a thousand speak about signs. So Quran is not a book of signs, S-C-I-E-N-C, -E it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. Now first you have to understand that each verse of the Quran, mashallah, has got various information. Many words of the Quran have multiple meanings. So the Quran was revealed as a book of guidance, as a book of Hidayah, as a book of guidance to take people away from the hellfire and towards Jannah. When you read the Quran, there are two types of reading. One is tazakkur -e quran one is tadabbur -e quran tazakkur -e quran means reading the Quran superficially or just reading it and understanding it. One is tadabbur quran that is pondering over the Quran, thinking of its meaning, in-depth thinking. tadabbur quran you just read, you understand the meaning without much pondering, but you get the message. tadabbur quran is with pondering and trying to know more of it. When the Quran was revealed, the basic message what was there coming from the first prophet Adam salam to the last prophet, prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the same about Tawheed. So the basic message of the Quran is talking about Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following his commandments. But naturally when the Quran was revealed, the message was, was very clear. Unlike the other revelations, Allah says in this Quran that I have perfected my religion for you and chosen you for deen. So it talked about the ahkam, about the do's and don'ts. Like praying five times is a farad in Islam. Then giving zakat is farad in Islam. Performing hajj is farad in Islam. Fasting the month of Ramadan is farad. Don't have alcohol, don't have pork, don't be involved in riba. So when you read the Quran, you understand the message of Tawhid very clearly. You understand about about the five pillars, that praying five times is a fard, giving zakat is a fard, fasting the month of Ramadan is fard, performing hajj is fard. It talks about abstaining from major sin, don't do murder, then don't have alcohol, don't gamble, don't involve in riba. So the major do's and don'ts. But as you keep on reading the Quran, you get the basic message of Tawheed and the do's and don'ts, how a person should lead the life. But when you keep on reading more, you start pondering and getting more in-depth information. Besides basic information of Tawhid, now you come to more aspects of Tawhid. Though when you see the signs of Allah, you start having more faith in Allah. Then you start understanding when the Quran was revealed, it was not the age of science and technology. It was the age of literature and poetry. So at that time, people were more concentrating on 
the language of the Quran. When the Quran was revealed, Arabic was at its peak. The Arabs were proud of their Arabic language. So when people read the Quran, they were shocked. This Quran cannot be from a human being. The eloquence of the language. And that time they were on the peak. So many people accepted Islam only by hearing the Quran. That this cannot be a human handiwork. And they accepted the deen. At the time when the Quran was revealed was not the age of sunset technology. So the way the Quran mentions, like you mentioned, that the Quran says the earth is flat, that time people weren't that much bothered. For example, Quran says in in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 78, verse number 6. In Surah Naziyat, chapter number uh, 78, verse number 30. Wal ard the ha. And thereafter, we have made the earth accept. Okay. People, daha has a meaning which is spread out. Correct. The other meaning of daha is derived from the Arabic word duya, meaning an egg. It refers to an ostrich egg. And we know the shape of the earth is not completely round like a ball. It is flattened from the pole, the same like the shape of an ostrich egg. So at that time, people did not ponder so much like what we are doing now. And now when science and technology is advanced, you are referring to the light of the moon is not its own light. It's the verse, the very verse in the Quran. When the Quran d describes the moonlight as compared to sunlight, the sunlight is referred to as siraj, meaning torch, diya, meaning a blazing lamp. The moonlight is referred to as munir or nur, borrowed light or reflection of light. At that time, both were light. So Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 61. That blessed is he, blessed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has placed the constellation in the sky and placed therein sun having light of its own, that is lamp, and moon, kamar, having borrowed light, munir. At that time, we both were light, so people didn't concentrate that what is the difference in this light and that light. They believe. Now, when science has advanced and we have come to know, when we ponder, Quran has already mentioned this earlier, but now when we are pondering, we are coming to know. Like Quran says that do they not ponder over the Quran? That when you ponder over the Quran, you come to know many of the signs and you start believing more in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you start believing Tawhid more. So now when science and technology is advanced and we come to know that this information is already given in the Quran, why didn't we really ponder over it? So many things now after pondering we have come to know that science had discovered 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back. The Quran had already mentioned 400 years ago. So we Muslims at that time did not ponder so much. But now when science had advanced, then we come to know, okay, this is the same Quran. But now there are many verses which Quran mentions and science doesn't agree. Like Quran says there is life beside this earth. Science doesn't spoken about that. There are many Quran talks about Jannah and Jannam. Science hasn't read that far. So yet, there are many things which the Quran has mentioned which science hasn't advanced so much to prove it. So what we say, that inshallah, we'll come to know about it soon. There is not a single verse in the Quran which is going against established science. So now, out of 100 points regarding science, 80% of all, hypothetically, 80% has already proved to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous, unknown. So my logic says, when 80% is 100% perfect, and the remaining 20%, not even 0.01% is wrong. So my logic says, inshallah, even this 20% will be correct. So mine is a logical belief. You may say blind belief, but actually it's a logical belief. That among the scientific points mentioned in the Quran, 80% has been proved to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. That there are jinns, there is life after death, there is heaven and hell. All these things, inshallah, maybe 50 years back, later, 100 years later, science will prove it. So my logic says, inshallah, this ambiguous portion, which is about 20%, even that, inshallah, science will prove to be correct very soon. So it's a logical belief. So, in the 6th century, First of all, Quran wasn't revealed. 
Point number two, science was in advance. They came to know 100 years later, 200 years later, 400 years later about, about the earth that it was in 1500, in the 16th century, that the first person travelled around the earth and proved that the earth was spherical. So 16th century, it was established fact that the earth is spherical in shape. And we found that in the Quran also. The Muslims may not have paid that much attention. But what we realize that from the 8th to the 12th century, the Europeans, they called it the Dark Ages. But actually the amount of advancement made from the 8th to the 12th century by the Muslim scientists is phenomenal. The Europeans called it the Dark Age because they were not educated. But you see the father of chemistry, it is a Muslim. Uh, Jabir ibn Nahyan, when he discovered alcohol, he called it Al-Gul, meaning evil spirit. Most of the father of mathematics, they are Muslims, geography Muslims, medicine Muslims, Ibn Sina, Avicenna, and I have given the talk on that. So from the 8th to the 12th century, the Muslims were advanced. Why? Because of Quran and Sunnah. When they read the Quran, they found many things and they implemented and they discovered it. So, they may not have discovered everything what the Quran says. But the Muslims were advanced in science and technology and the Arabs were very much advanced. Why? Because of the Quran. Now we have gone away from a deen, therefore you hardly find Muslim scientists. But in the past, most of the scientists were Muslim. Even if a non-Muslim wanted to know something about science in the 8th, 9th or 10th century, he had to learn Arabic. Arabic was a major language of knowledge at that time. So, that's the reason it wasn't known on the 6th century, but now it's established fact. It's also there in the Quran. Hope this answers the question.